What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. A little while ago, the absolute legends over at Open Source SDR Lab actually reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try out the latest and greatest HackRF H4M. Now, if you've never heard of the HackRF before, basically, it's a tiny little powerhouse of an SDR or software-defined radio. An SDR allows you to send and receive radio frequencies, so you can do cool things like listen to emergency services, just like a walkie-talkie. Just like the Flipper Zero, you could analyze and emulate sub-gigahertz frequencies like those used in cars, garage doors, gates, and more. You can also read information from airplanes flying overhead using ADSB. You can also analyze and emulate Bluetooth traffic. You can even manipulate GPS signals, and there's actually a ton more features you can do with the HackRF. Now, I already have this gorgeous HackRF H2M I got from Rabbit Labs. It's even the Clifford Heath version of the HackRF. If you know, you know. But the new H4M was supposed to have some really cool quality of life updates, so an open source SDR lab reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try one. Of course I said yes. So introducing the brand new H4M Porta Pack by Open Source SDR Labs. Now this thing has a ton of quality of life updates. It's absolutely gorgeous, and it really brings things to the next level. I'm gonna go over each and every one of those improvements, and I'm even gonna show you how to get it up and running on the latest Mayhem firmware. I figured that's about enough intro for me. Let's get at it. All right, so starting off, if you have absolutely no idea what a HackRF does, definitely go back and watch all of my HackRF videos. I've already made three videos on the HackRF, and from a practical standpoint, everything in those videos is all perfectly relevant. Now, the big difference in the H4M is the hardware. So let's switch over to the top-down camera, take a closer look. All right, so let's start off with the most obvious upgrades. Well, notice right here that there's actually two switches right on the front here. This guy right there is for an external microphone. So you can actually switch it to use the onboard microphone right there or an external microphone through the headphone jack. That's super cool. Now the onboard microphone isn't new. My Rabbit Labs one has that as well, but being able to toggle that on and off with a switch is very useful. So that means you can actually use your Hack RF just like a walkie talkie. So we can do something like this if we go into uh, receive and then go to audio. There we go. We can actually use this just like a walkie talkie. So let's put this down, grab a walkie talkie. If we turn this on and we tune them both to the same frequency, you can see, gotta love static. If I hold this closer up to the microphone, actually, let me turn off my noise gate so I'll be able to hear it. Okay, so now we should be able to hear it. And if I move away. Hello, you can hear me on the Hack RF now. Hello, Hack RF. So you can hear me talking there, but I can also go, if we go back, go into microphone. Now I can transmit on this as well. So let's go ahead and click on do a Roger beep. That's always fun. Push the talk. So now my radio is working. Whoop. Let me move out of the way so you don't hear that, but check it out. Hello, testing, testing. Can you hear me? This is the hack RF speaking. I don't know, but I think that's super cool. Put away our radio. Now, this isn't a brand new feature, but being able to toggle the microphone on and off with a switch is pretty nice. Now, you can always add a speaker to your Hack RF, which I did before on mine. I actually pulled the speaker out of the T deck over there and put it in there because it's just a JST connection. So, if you want to add your own, it's pretty easy. But I honestly believe that speaker on the Hack RF is one of the most important mods because it just makes it so much easier to learn RF if you can hear what you're looking at. Now, this other switch is something that literally everybody with an Hack RF can tell you is absolutely amazing. It may not seem exciting, but this, this is an on off switch. So all I gotta do is switch it and it's off. What's really nice about the on off switch is the fact that this completely disconnects the battery from the Hack RF. That means there's no phantom power loss. It's very, very nice to have. So on the the old hack RF right here, the way you turn it on is by pressing on this encoder dial right here. This would turn it on. And you press it twice, this will turn it off. Nope. And you press it twice, that'll turn it off. Nope. Oh, whoops. You press it twice, that'll turn it off. Nope. There we go. Now what's bad about that is when you put this in a bag, chances are something's gonna push on this dial and then it's gonna turn on. And then by the time you go to actually use it, it'll have been on forever and the battery's gonna die and that's no fun at all. So now that you have your tactile on off switch, you never again, you have to worry about your hack RF being turned on inside the bag and having the battery die, because that's not amazing. You know, what is amazing is this segue to today's sponsor, Delete Me. Are you sick and tired of having your data be used as currency? I know I am. Nowadays, it seems like every single company out there that has your data is distributing it without your permission. Basically, anytime you get anything free online, it's your data that you're paying with. 
Then that data gets sold to literally hundreds and hundreds of different data brokers, and they're all over the internet. Well, that's where Delete Me comes in. Delete Me searches all over the internet for your information and asks them to remove it immediately. That's right, the data brokers have to remove your information if you ask them. The problem is just finding all of those data brokers takes literally forever. I'm a pretty busy guy and Delete Me has saved so much time. It's absolutely amazing. I've actually been with Delete Me for about a year now and I can see month over month, my data is in fewer and fewer and fewer places. It's such a relief knowing that Delete Me is behind the scenes getting me removed from these data brokers. So visit joindeletemecom slash Sasquatch or use code Sasquatch to get 20% off. That's S-A-S-Q-U-A-C-H for 20% off. Thank you so much, Delete Me, for your support. Let's get back at it. So yeah, not having that phantom power drain is actually really cool. When I went to film this video, I grabbed my old Porta pack and turns out battery was dead. I was charged when I put it away, but turns out I had a dead battery, so I had to go ahead and recharge that while I'm trying to film. So that was a bit of a hassle. Now, on the topic of bag-friendly things, this new encoder dial is actually really, really nice. It's pretty much completely flat. So again, when you have it in a bag, this thing's not gonna get messed with. It's kind of like the same style of an old iPod. So it's got a rotary in the middle that rotates, and then you've got four direction buttons on the four directions. And then in the middle, this is a button. Whoops, there we go. And now we're into the Hack RF. So very cool. It makes it really easy to navigate the menus because you can just dial through here like this, or you can go up and down. Remember, this is also a touch screen. So you can go through and touch things as well. It makes it really, really easy to navigate the Mayhem firmware. And now what I consider to be an absolutely huge, huge update on this, which is, dun 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 dun, USB-C. Now these things used to have micro USB and micro USB is absolute dog water. It is terrible. It is literally the worst interface that has ever existed in the face of USB. I literally have a gallon size Ziploc bag full of micro USB cables and I can't for the life of me seem to find a single micro USB cable that reliably carries data for an extended period of time. Now we have a USB-C port, which is literally the only right answer when it comes to USB ports. One of the really nice features of the Hack RF is you can actually turn it into Hack RF mode. What this does is it connects to your computer through USB. That's actually how the Hack RF originally was designed to be used by Great Scott Gadgets. It didn't always have the screen. So you take this, plug it into your computer using the dreaded micro USB, and then you can control it on your computer like any other SDR. But the problem I always had was I'd have it like propped up on something. It was really, really hard to get a good connection with the micro USB. With USB-C, this thing plugs in, plugs into my computer, it all works super well and reliably first time. What's also nice is they've updated the charging circuit so that it actually charges much, much faster, which again, in my case, where I'm trying to charge my other hack RF right now, that would have been really nice to have. Now on the topic of charging, what we can also do now is view the battery status. So if we go over here, so we can select the battery and we can see exactly how much battery we have. We see the current voltage. We can see how much current it's actually using and it's discharging. We can see approximately how much time until this thing runs out of battery. So it gives you a pretty good barometer of how much juice you got left. So I really do like that feature. Now this next feature is extremely, extremely exciting because it is GPIO ports. So right there we have add-on ports. We can plug more boards into this just like a Flipper Zero. So you can see with a Flipper Zero, the top here, those ports are for add-on boards and just like everything else. I mean, you've seen anything from me in Flipper Zero, you know I love GPIO boards, but bam, now Flipper Zero has Wi-Fi, which it didn't have it before. So we're gonna be able to take this port right here and plug in things like, like an ESP32 or like a GPS, and immediately you're adding functionality to the port pack That is absolutely phenomenal. Because remember, when Flipper first came out, it did have the Wi-Fi board, but it didn't have any of the additional boards like the IR board, the extended range sub gigahertz boards, NRF boards. There are so many different boards out there for the Flipper Zero, and that, that's the future of the Hack RF. I am extremely excited about that. So that's a basic overview of the latest features in the H4M Hack RF. So let me do a quick run through of what you need to do when you get your very own H4M. So yeah, if you're just taking this guy out of the box, you're definitely gonna wanna update to the latest version of the Mayhem firmware. Now, Hack RFs don't come with an SD card, so you're gonna need to supply your own. You don't need anything crazy. I'm using a 32 gig SD card I got from AWOX Dynamics. That bad boy plugs in right up here. It's a little tricky. Sometimes you gotta use like a little, I use a popsicle stick, honestly, to push it in, but it does click in, so make sure it clicks, and then you're ready to go. From there, go ahead and grab your, jeez, that was crazy, your USB cable, plug this bad boy in, 
boom. And then we're ready to go. We'll hop on down to the desktop and get this thing updated. Cool, so now we're just gonna navigate over to hackrf.app. Yes, that's the actual address for it. And then when we plug in our hackrf, you have to click connect device. There we go. There it is right there, com18, hit connect and there we go. It'll pop right up here and you can even see the screen. Very, very cool. So from here, all we have to do is scroll all the way down here and go to manage firmware. And from here, we can just update it. It's literally this easy. Since the Mayhem 2.0 update, you can do them all on the web. Just go to latest stable release. It's going to go ahead, flash it right there. This is all real time, 11 seconds, 10 seconds. We're not going to watch all of it, but it's literally this easy. And just like that, we're updating. It's super simple. Now, you can do the latest stable release or the latest nightly release. The nightly releases are bleeding edge, so they may have things that don't quite work properly yet, but latest and greatest, sometimes you get some stumbling points. But for our example, let's just do stable because that's going to work no problem. Now, what we can also do is navigate over to the Mayhem Firmware GitHub because they have some SD card assets that we kind of want right over here. So what we can do, the easiest way to do this, I know we can do it through Git clone. There's a ton of other ways. We're gonna do the super simple way. Click on the little arrow next to code, local, go to download, zip, boom, download zip. Save it right to the desktop. I've already done that. Now, if we minimize to the desktop, here's our folder. Open that guy up right there. Always opens in the wrong window. We're over here and then we can open this. And now we're looking for SD card. Just drag it directly out of the zip folder. And in a few seconds, it'll be downloaded onto our drive. All right, so now that the files are decompressed, all we have to do is make sure we close the Mayhem Hub because if it's connected to the Mayhem Hub, it's not gonna let us transfer files. So we'll close that and then we can transfer our files over to the SD card. Once we're there, what we'll do is, oh, if I don't get stuck here, we're gonna use this. We're gonna navigate to utilities and then go to SD over USB. We click that, click run. Now we'll see if we go back to our desktop, our HackRF pops up just like that. So we open the SD card folder that we just got, copy all of this, except for splash. I already have a splash, I'm gonna delete that. Yes, I have my own custom splash already. I'm gonna copy this and then just paste it right here. And that's it. That's all we have to do. Now our HackRF is ready to go. Now, if you want to know how to use the HackRF beyond just getting it ready to go, I've got a video for that already. Actually, I've got three videos. I talked about them earlier. I go through what all the apps do, how to use some of them and how to not get yourself in trouble. Because remember, you can receive and transmit with a HackRF, which means you can transmit on frequencies that you're not legally allowed to unless you have a license. In fact, there are a ton of frequencies you're not allowed to broadcast on at all, full stop. But yeah, that's the brand new H4M by Open Source SDR Lab. It is absolutely sick. Thank you all so much for watching this video over every other video on the internet. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. You're the greatest. And don't forget to save 20% at joindeleteme.com slash Sasquatch or use code Sasquatch at checkout. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.